For decades, neurologists have used the EDSS, or Expanded Disability Status Scale, to measure disability in multiple sclerosis research, but it's terrible, and it's particularly static and inflexible in older people with progressive MS, and hinders our ability to do good research, so we need something better, namely the MS Functional Composite, which I'll explain in this video. Let's have some fun. The EDSS was developed by Professor John Kurtzke, pictured to the upper right, in 1983, and it was revolutionary for its time, but it no longer really serves our needs and has various drawbacks. I do have a separate video on EDSS and the complicated scoring if you want to take a look. But the problem is at lower levels of disability, the score tends to jump around a lot and vary from day to day and examiner to examiner, but at higher levels of disability, the score is very static. For instance, if you have an EDSS of 6.0, it means a cane is required to walk 100 meters. But even within that category, there's just too much variability. For instance, someone may have poor balance and require a cane, but they could walk several miles and have very few other multiple sclerosis symptoms. Or you could have someone that can barely walk 100 meters with a cane and has poor cognitive function, pain, and other issues, and they still have an EDSS of 6. So in a randomized trial, it's really difficult to measure a difference between treatment and placebo because if someone has an EDSS of 6.0 it's not likely to change that much either way at least if they've been stable at that EDSS for a long period of time prior to the study. Now it's also biased in favor of lower extremity function. It's pretty good at measuring walking ability but it's not very good at measuring upper extremity function or cognitive function or visual function and it's very complicated to score. It often requires a neurologist or at least someone who's good at doing a neurological exam, such as a nurse practitioner or physician's assistants with experience in multiple sclerosis. And if you want to take a look more at the scoring, you can look at that separate video. Enter the MS Functional Composite, which was developed in 1994 by the National MS Society that measures four different aspects of neurological function and is much better than the EDSS and really should replace the EDSS as the primary outcome in clinical trials. So that it uses the time 25 foot walk to measure lower extremity function, the nine hole peg test to measure hand function. There are two different tests that can be used for cognitive function. The original MSFC used the PACESAT. Now the simple digit modality tests or SDMT is more popular. And they also later added the low contrast letter acuity or low contrast visual acuity to measure visual function. So what you see in red is what was originally used for the MSFC. Now the SDMT kind of replaced the PACESAT and low contrast visual acuity was added later. So for the time 25 foot walk, we simply mark off 25 feet in a hallway and time you, and you can use an assistive device if needed, and it's much more sensitive to subtle changes in gait, much more so than the EDSS, and a typical young healthy person can do this in about four to five seconds. For the hand function, we use the nine hole peg test, where you see these pegs placed in holes, and you take them out one by one and place them in this valley, and then you put them back in the holes, and you do it with both the dominant and and subordinate hand and they're recorded separately. A typical time is around 15 seconds with no hand dysfunction. This is the PASAT 3 or the PASTE Auditorial Serial Edition Test. And what you hear from a recorded voice is a series of numbers every three seconds. So for instance, you would hear one and then three seconds later you would hear four and then eight and then one. And what you have to do is take the last two numbers you hear and say the number by adding them together. So you hear one and four and then you say five and then you hear eight and you add it to four and you say 12 and then you hear one and you add it to eight and you say nine and it's very difficult because you have to ignore the number that you're saying and remember the last number that the recording said and add it to the new number so even a totally healthy person with good cognitive function can miss some and it can be quite frustrating particularly to someone even with mild cognitive dysfunction related to MS and there's also a pace at two where the numbers come every two seconds so it's even harder so 
because this test is very frustrating and difficult, a lot of people are using the symbol digit modalities test. And what this is, is there's a code where each number is represented by a certain symbol. And you have a little time to sort of learn the code at the beginning. And then you have to write in the corresponding symbol as fast as you can and do as many as you can. So at the beginning, you're sort of looking back and forth between the code and what you have to write in. But then you sort of memorize some of them and you're able to do it more quickly. And so it's a good test of processing speed, which can be affected by multiple sclerosis. And it's much less frustrating. So a lot of people prefer the SDMT. Also, for visual function, we use the low contrast visual acuity scale. And this is similar to a Snellen chart, except there's a very light gray instead of black letters. And you simply have to read as many letters as you can, starting from the top. And the total number of letters you could read is your score. And it's more sensitive to subtle visual loss from prior optic neuritis than a standard visual chart. So the great thing about the MS functional composite is that the four different tests really aren't strongly correlated with each other, so it really does measure four different aspects of neurological function. There's a big difference between someone who walks well and has cognitive function and someone who walks well and has no cognitive problems. Also, the test-retest correlation is very high about 0.9, one would mean a perfect correlation. So there's not a lot of fluctuation from test to test. There is a correlation between the MS functional composite and the EDSS of about negative 0.47. The reason it's negative is because a higher score on the MS functional composite means less disability, whereas for the EDSS, it means more disability. The MS functional composite, importantly, is considerably more variable than the EDSS once we reach higher levels of disability, such as 6 to 6.5, or more, and that's what we really need because we really need to study these people and see if our treatments work or not. So we need a little bit of variability. We need to be able to show a difference between treatment and placebo. And very importantly, brain lesion burden and brain atrophy correlate more strongly with the MS functional composite than with the EDSS, probably because we're measuring things that matter to patients, such as cognitive function. Now, it does have to be said that neither of these tests measure some very important things such as fatigue and pain, but overall measures of quality of life in people with MS are more strongly correlated with the MS functional composite than with the EDSS. Now the one disadvantage of the MS functional composite is that if someone says this patient has an EDSS of 5, I'm very familiar with that and I know what it means, but the calculation of the MS functional composite is complicated involving adding the z-scores of each individual test, and you'd have to add uh, the z-score for the low contrast visual acuity and divided by four for the updated test. And I wouldn't really know what that number means, but neurologists are going to just have to adapt to that and learn what it means. And of course, it's important not to just know the total score, but to understand each individual performance. Because again, someone could have bad walking and good cognitive function, or good walking and bad cognitive function and good vision, for instance. Now, lastly, uh, Professor Daniel Antoneda, who's very active in MS social media, did an excellent study defining thresholds for meaningful change in the MS functional composite subscores. So just like the EDSS, you can have a little bit of fluctuation, but beyond a certain threshold, it really does mean that there's a real change. So for instance, for the time 25 foot walk, a 20% change is likely to be significant. For the nine hole peg test, a 15 to 20% change is likely to be significant. The symbol digit modalities test is very sensitive. Even a change in four correct answers, which is only about 10% for most people, is significant. And for low contrast visual acuities, a seven letter difference is significant. So my goal is to spread the message far and wide that the FDA and EMA should stop requiring the EDSS. This is the primary outcome of clinical trials and multiple sclerosis research and to start using the MS functional composite or other similar composite outcome measures. And hopefully we can include more people who are older, who have progressive MS and who have higher levels of baseline disability in our clinical trials so we can learn more about them and give better advice and make better decisions for all of us and everyone in the MS community. I'd love to know your feedback on this video in the comments below and if you have any suggestions for topics for future videos.